Hello everyone, w welcome back. Episode 23, hour number three. Uh, Adam, mm -hmm. I have a question. As I'm perched out yeah. throughout the night, um, I would assume birds don't sleep completely throughout the night. You probably wake up a bunch of times. Um, mm -hmm. As I'm like looking around, uh, are there places above us? Are we like on the bottom of a structure? Yeah, so you're not on the bottom of a structure necessarily, but you can think of it kind of like... Kind of like the I can never <laughs> remember the name of the keep that's on top of Helm's Deep, uh, but it's that it's like it's set into a or or even um, even like the the um, really any like medieval city that's built into the side of a mountain. It's very steep. There's winding roads that go back and forth, and you're down here, and there's like other stuff up behind you, but you also look down into the into the valley. Um, so yeah, there's, there's always stratum above you. Um, the highest thing is a, a tower, uh, where the, the monks, the eternally chanting monks live. Okay. Um, so you're, you're, you're up enough, but you're not, there's, you're not at the top. All right. I think then I'll wake up, uh, as quickly as the eight hour allotment of sleeping is. So whatever time that is pretty early. Uh, yeah. and I, I start transcribing a note, uh, on a piece of parchment. Um, okay. And I'll, I'll present you, it to them you, when they wake up. Do you have parchment or did you have to steal it from somewhere? Uh, I mean, it, I, I came, it came from, um, when I left the, the roost, so to speak. Sure. Yeah. Okay. We stole a lot of stuff from a lot of people. So <laughs> shit like that was pretty common. Cause you know, merchants would come into the forest and we would steal all their stuff and, and steal them from the caravans and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay, so uh, I think then, Azriel, you are you are the next one to to wake up, and you wake to the like scratching sound of a of a quill on paper, um, and you see you don't have any furniture, so you see like hunched down on the ground. Uh, I guess right. you see the uh, uh, you see Black Gale just. I think as you get up, my my uh, beak turns to you, and I see that you're awake, and I I say once again in your voice, "Hello, stranger." And go back to writing. <laughs> Good morning, Bird. What are you doing there? Uh, Berg, you, you, Berg, you wake up. You you think that you heard uh, Azrael say your voice or your name. You hear like, morning, Berg. And you're like, slowly like waking up. <laughs> mm. uh, I, I, uh, I finish the finish writing on the parchment. I look at it, maybe get real close to my eye and look at everything very detailed and finely. And push it back and, and walk over there as the talons scratch on the floor and hand it to um, Azriel and, and tap it. Um, and I would assume you look down at it. Yeah, look, I'm looking at it and what am I seeing? Uh, I think as you read it, it's very elegant and fine writing uh, that I learned from a... Um, there were a bunch of notes and letters that we found from a merchant that got lost in the forest. Uh, and he's a very respected noble. And so I learned how to exactly copy his his way of writing um and in that note it says that uh as uh the merchant adam i don't what what name do you want to give the merchant oh uh i don't know um where is he from uh the court of coins okay um let me see uh this merchant's name is yan okay um at the top it says like yan and it's got his uh his little seal as a merchant and everything. Uh, and in the letter, it basically says, um, to, to whom it may concern or to, to the landowner of this uh, fine establishment, uh, I am seeking a apartment um, or a house on one of the higher floors as I will be arriving in two months time, but I need it ready immediately. So if you can assist with this, that would be great. And I will have payment when I arrive. And I think Jan's a very well-known merchant uh, in the lands, but he doesn't really speak about the fact that he lost a shit ton of his wares a couple months back in the forest. So I present that to you and I just kind of smile. I'm just like, what? What? It, why did you write this? What is. I, I tap it a bunch of times and say in your voice, this will save your divine soul. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I'm pointing upwards after that. Are you saying that there's something above us that we need to go and check out? I just slump, and maybe in my own, uh, or maybe in uh, Oron, which is the air elemental, 
Because it's the only other mm. language that I can probably speak and I've had conversations with. I just call you all a bunch of fucking idiots. <laughs> yeah, it makes uh, so n- neither of you recognize uh, Orin, but yeah, maybe sometime in your past you knew a, a sassy mouthed air elemental. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and and Jubilant Black Gale makes a sound like wind rustling through the trees. Well, that's that what happens also. Yeah, it's very hastily. It's it's a lot of air. It's not. Yeah, that yeah. happens also to be like questioning your parentage. Yeah. You just don't understand it. Uh, and I and I turn and uh, walk to like <laughs> the edge of the the corner of the room, and then walk as if I'm measuring very precisely to the other corner of the room, and then turn and walk to the uh, corner of the room, um, and then uh, what would be like a sad noise? <laughs> uh. Maybe I make yep. like the sound of like a, no, uh, a sword like penetrating someone's body and him like slumping over and just, like, like a and, and, like a death throw. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. And I and I look at you and tap the the paper again. So you're trying to tell me that and I've got a, I've got so... a, a thing like this. Like I'm, I think you're about to get it. All right. So <laughs> you're trying to tell me that. Someone, something up there is making you sad. Or... I just slump over. <laughs> I like how I I know I know as a as a person. I think I know what the, what what he's getting. What JP is getting at, but it's a fun game trying to see. Yeah, if, I, if I like. Gets on the same page. I just slump and I walk over to the corner and this time faster, but still as precise. Measure the entire room, uh, and then <laughs> on my hands, let's say it's like I, I have four uh, talons or three talons, and I hold up like. I point to a wall and say like three and put nine and then point to another wall and say six and point to another wall and say nine and then point to another wall and say six and then make the death throw noise again and like hunch over real bad this time. Oh, I'm sorry. We can't afford something bigger than this. Is that what you're saying? I start tapping the letter and say, and and then like uh, you see one of the talents come up to the top and it says like, um, I point to Jan, and then it says in the letter, like, whoever owns this establishment, I will be arriving in two months. Please have a bigger, uh, please have a very large room available for me, but I need it immediately. And then it's signed Jan perfectly. Are you saying that I <laughs> once again you put the, want the me, up? You want me to use this letter to steal a room from an innocent merchant? I start clapping. <laughs> <laughs> And maybe even mimicking the noise with my clap, so it sounds like there's a, a, a applause in the room. <laughs> like you, you make the sound of like yeah. a bunch of people yeah. applauding. Yeah, it's an applause in the room. Couple birds in there just like you scrawing. disgust <laughs> me. I throw it back at you. I look down How at it. How dare you? And I'm just I, my my beak is agape as I, as I'm staring at you. Almost, and now it's maybe turning sad at this point as well. And I'm, I know I, that you thank you. There's rumors of your thievery, but I didn't believe it to be true until now. You can't just take what you want. You have to earn it here. I I go and pick up the note and tear it apart. Walk back over to the perch very slowly and just perch. (laughs) Maybe like put my head down in my body. While they're talking, um, what uh, what are you doing, Berg? Berg's just literally like watching. Like, what the fuck is going on? (laughs) That's what he's doing for a moment. And then just when he realizes what's, what's going on, he just goes back and, and, and sits against the, the, the wall in can contemplative you make, thought. Can you make a, uh, can you make a perception check for me, Berg? Oh! Okay. Let's do it. Mm, boom. Yeah. That's Good. a, yeah, I don't see anything. All right. All right. It's early. So uh, the two, uh, the two, the two of you are talking, and and Berg, you're distracted <laughs> by them making noise. Um, and uh, I think that means that you don't get any, you don't get any run up to uh, the door to your apartment just opening. Um, you you maybe hear oh. the brief, the brief jingle of like a key ring, and then the door to the apartment swings open, and there are. Uh, there are five uh, five people. One of them is directly outside the door. He's just opened it, and there's like four of them behind. And they just like come. They start coming into the apartment, 
Um, they're they're all dressed similarly. They're wearing um, like uh, kind of voluminous um, like silk pants and sandals. Uh, they have um, either uh, they look sort of like cropped uh, like tops on, and then like a feather or a, a fur like shoulder like mantle. Um, and they all have a uh, iron like. Uh, shackle like around their neck. Some of them have a bit of a chain hanging from it, um, and they all have uh, on them like tattoos on like their arms. Um, one of them has like a tattoo on the side of his face, and uh, yeah, they just like walk into your house. Can I make an insight check to see if these people are here to fight? Yes, yeah, definitely. Fuck nine. <laughs> well, they're armed. Um, you know, the 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 one in the lead has. Um, has a, a sword on his belt. Some of them have um, uh, like brass knuckles, but they don't look like they're not coming in like weapons drawn. They're, they're not drawn, armed. right? Yeah. Yeah, they're just armed. <clears throat> okay, I, uh, I'm alarmed at this, so I get up off the roost very quickly and walk over as the talent scrape on the floor. Uh, I look at them and like, who are you and why are you in here? And Azrael's voice, I say, sir. <laughs> I'm just waiting for a response. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they, uh, they, they, they stop, um, and uh, the, the man that, that sort of led the, 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 the coming into the room, um, he, uh, he looks at you and, like, kind of cocks an eyebrow. He's like, where's the girl? What girl? We just moved in here last night. I say in that and then, voice and, and go, Girl? <laughs> yeah, he, he turns and looks over his shoulder, uh, and the others kind of like look at each other and turns back to you. And he he he's got this key ring in his hand, and he says, "The girl whose apartment this is, the girl that owes us all that money. You say she left town? Yeah, she <sighs> she seemed to be in a hurry. I don't know what that was about. I'll tell you what it's about. It's about us. We own this place, the tea shop." These apartments, the whole neighborhood is ours. And now his, you're ours too. And Her his, problems, your problems. And his you voice, I say, we own this place. Just interrupt him. Say like, we yeah, own yeah. this place. And he, he kind of like looks at you and looks uh, back at uh, Ezreal and, and he, he's like, so now her problem is yours. Pay up. Well, who are you first? He, he laughs and and they they like look at each other and the others are like chuckling. He's like, "You are new in town." Sorry, we are brand new. We just arrived. And he uh he like, crack kind of cracks his knuckles and he's like, "Well, consider this a good chance to get acquainted. This neighborhood down here, Lower Monastery, belongs to us and to our friends. And if you want to be our friend, that's." fine with me we can always use more friends and like one of the uh one of the girls uh in the in the gang is like eyeing berg like real lasciviously and uh, she grins at you and like all of her front teeth are gold and uh and then he, he looks at you and he uh, he says uh this doesn't have to get messy tianxi but it will if you push back you still haven't given me a name what do you call yourselves we don't have names Devil take them. Well, I have a question for you. And he, he, he grins and kind of bows obsequiously, like, please. Is this... How much, how much does she owe you first? Is it a large sum? He, uh, he nods. Yes. He has bad gambling debt. Many thousand gold. Well, fortunately... We don't have that. So I have to ask you, is it worth your life? I repeat that line. Is mm -hmm. it worth your life? Maybe from like the shoulder of Azrael. And he, he takes a step back and laughs. He's like, no, no, we're not here for a fight. Besides, you three, you look real tough. No need for any of us to die. Girls got relatives. Maybe we go squeeze them instead. And uh, he, he turns to his friends and he's like, let's go visit that blacksmith. Wait. And they, they start to leave. And then he stops. And he turns around and he's like, oh, Tianxi had a change of heart? <clears throat> yes. You are not to touch her. If you touch her, your life will end. Do you understand me? <laughs> and he, he, he laughs. And uh, he's like, 
You can't change the will of the devil. People are bound to what they owe. You kill me, you kill all of us. Someone else will come and collect on that debt. It's how the world works. And they will die as well. Okay, big boy, you'll kill everyone in town. I Only the evil ones. <laughs> Not all oh. in town are scum. Poor Tianxi, come down from heaven. Everything's perfect up there. Things a little gray down here. Not about evil. It's about what's owed. What's right? I'll show you some gray splattered on the wall. And he, he, he puts his hands up. He's like, I have no fight with you, half-orc. Nor you, Tianxi, or whatever that thing is. We just want money to go where it's supposed to go. The debt's not ours. We're just here to collect. Is there something we could do for you to satisfy the debt? And he, he grins and says, uh, Maybe. Maybe. What are you offering? We are three powerful warriors. And if there's something you need done, perhaps we could do it within reason as payment for the debt. Hmm. Make a uh, make a persuasion check. Eleven. Okay. He he nods. He nods. And he says, uh, "Maybe." I'll talk to the boss. You bought yourself a day, Tianchi. See you tomorrow. And the the group of them uh, the group of them leave. Uh, the the woman uh, last out looks at you, Berg, and like makes a sucking noise on her teeth and like winks at you, and then backs out of the room and closes the door. Berg's just like, <laughs> yeah, it was weird. <laughs> She's got a thing for uh, half works, huh? Maybe. Uh, so the door shuts, and I like quickly walk up uh, to be right in front of Azrael, and Emberg's voice. Uh, I say, "If the armor is poor, I will know." And I like, I start like hitting his. Uh, his chest a bit, like we got, we got to go. Exactly, we need her alive to finish the armor. And cutting off the hands of this creature will do nothing. We need to cut off the head. This will lead us to their boss. Uh, Adam, I want to go out to the <laughs> perch and uh, see if I can contact my my criminal contact. I want to try to know what the fuck, who the fuck the, these guys just were. Yeah. So uh, when you establish your your contact, it's for your background. It's like a specific. It's like a person in a particular place. Okay. What uh, is be that? The ra- is yeah, that- I, I would assume it's the Raven that I had. Kind of. Yeah, but the I mean the Ravens report to someone like someone in the in the like criminal underworld, and if so you, you want to if you want to establish that they're part of the criminal underworld of this uh, of this town, I'm just going to take a look at the background mm. just to make sure. So yeah. have a reliable contact who acts as your liaison to a network of other criminals. Oh, I see. So the the Raven is used by a bunch of criminals, and that's your like way into the yeah. Okay, right. so you can right. give you it's, can give it's a message like I'm to stealing the Raven. their information highway basically. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Yeah, you're 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 a uh, okay, cool. So, what do you want to do? Uh, I'm just gonna walk out to the perch and and or the perch and make calling noises to try to contact the raven. Okay, yeah, sure. And I, I don't even know that it's one raven. I think it's just like a, a bunch of them that get used to travel like messages, and you're you're siphoning off of them. Sure. So one of them, um, yeah, one of them, a, a younger a younger one, still has lots of its like downy feathers, uh, flies over and lands on the uh, lands on the perch and kind of hops over and looks at you. Yeah, I. I lean down on the on the perch so it we're looking beak to beak uh and and communicate with them like these these men who just left our building who are they do you know um and the the bird uh like it, it can't tell you obviously like right now but it understands that you're looking for information on them and uh and it, it flies off to go and and try to like collect something to tell you okay yeah okay yeah i stand up and uh, walk back over once again to, to Azrael and say, you know, if the armor is poor, I will know. It's a fantastic bird. <laughs> I don't have the, the deep bass on my mic yet. Okay. <clears throat> well, looks like we have... This town isn't so quiet. 
Seems like they have criminals. Well, when they return, hopefully they can take us to their leader. And then we will show them the might of the fountain. <laughs> uh, as you just did, I, as you said and screamed yes in that fight, I screamed yes as well just now. <laughs> or in that conversation, I once again screamed <laughs> yes in your voice. Walk over and start putting on my armor. Mm -hmm. They, they seem to be petty thugs. However, I do not want the death of a blacksmith on our hands. Well, I know. And we at least need her alive for a week. I do want my armor. Actually, yeah, you, you're not wearing any armor right now, are you? No. <laughs> uh, and and I think I have a shield though, because I would imagine yeah. she probably has a shield. That yes, you do have a shield because it's not; it's more common. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would think like you, you guys are probably watching me put on my scale armor as you're talking about this, but it's it's a very uh, slow and like meticulous process because I'm not trying to pull any feathers out. So like I'm pulling the, the I'm, I'm brushing the feathers down with one. Uh, talon and then pulling the armor slowly over it to make sure they don't get ruffled. Uh, so it takes a little bit longer than most people as I put that all on. Yeah. Hmm. Perhaps we should go talk to the blacksmith. Uh, she had to have known something. Agreed. Uh, yeah, you good? Yeah. I walk over and in uh, Hazan's voice I say, anything born can die. And just kind of close my <laughs> eyes and my beak opens a bit. Hmm. Okay, yeah, so you want to head out and, and head back to the blacksmith shop? Yeah, and ask her some questions. Okay. Uh, so on your way, uh, on your way back, um, you walk by an open square. And it's in front of a, what looks like a, like a public building of some kind. Um, there are a lot of people around. It's got a big open square. And in the front, there are a bunch of monks in uh, blue uh, training outfits. A lot of them have their, their top like tunic off and just have their undershirt on because it's like, quite warm and they're doing heavy work. Um, and they're carrying these big clay urns on their back. And one of them has taken his like urn off and set it on the ground. And they, they seem to be resting. Um, like they're, they're running around with these like big heavy water-filled urns uh, as part of their training. And as you uh, as you walk by and you see this, uh, one of them um, one of them is uh, uh, is talking uh, kind of closer than the others. And Berg, you hear a voice that for a second you you could swear through the din you recognize as uh, as Azure Vortex. Mm -hmm. You're like, and it, it you know it, it causes that sudden that sudden like sense of of memory. And you look up and yeah, you see this this young man who looks like just like her. Um, and it, I don't know, what do you, how do you react? Like there, it's, it's like someone took Azure Vortex and then like made her a boy and there he is. And he's just like leaning on this urn talking to a, a, a girl in the same, same robes, but she's human. Yeah. I think Berg just stops for a second and just like stops what he's doing. Stop not paying attention. Everyone else is just in like regards him and looks at him. I don't know if the others take notice, but. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure Azriel and. Um, Gail I see you stop, and then I see where you're looking, and then instantly I recognize the boy from that we ch chatted to before, and I know that it's, that was uh, her, her brother. It just like clicks on in my head, like, and I tell I tell Berg, um, that was Azriel's brother. I might have known. It looked very similar. Um, yeah, the boy laughs about something that the girl uh, said, and yeah, same thing. It like cuts like right through you, Berg. You're like you've heard that laugh before. I look at uh, Azriel and, and say in your voice, uh, "Azure Vortex." She was a companion that was traveling with Berg. She unfortunately met her end in in that cave we came out of. Uh, was there anything uniquely? Or unique about the look of Azure Vortex that I would have seen if she walked through the Elder's room, Adam? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, she's the only <clears throat> she's the only water genasi you'd ever seen. I mean, up till right this second. Okay, so um, if there's water so her, near, her yeah, if, if there's yeah. water near me, I go and and splash some of it 
uh, and look at Berg. Uh, yeah, there's like a puddle of rainwater or something. Yeah, I, I splash my talons in it and start imitating the noise of the splash uh, and say Azure Vortex. Yes. That is her brother. I, the talon comes up on my feathery <laughs> face and I'm just like... <laughs> little. Yeah. <laughs> just staring. I think Berg is just staring and just like... I don't... I don't know whether or not we should talk to him. And Berg's, so you're, you're watching. Yeah. He's having this conversation with the this girl, yeah. and then another one of the monks has come over and like started talking to to the two of them. And now Azure Vortex's brother and him are kind of like fake sparring and like laughing. And the other monks, they're all totally distracted from whatever training exercise they've done, and they're all just like being, you know, young adults standing around goofing off instead of instead of practicing. Yeah, I'm staring at the the kid and say, I don't know what part he plays. Berg, you knew her longer than I. Do you think she would want her brother to know? I don't know, but he seems happy. There is no need for me to disturb that. Very well. Perhaps another day. Perhaps. And just walks on. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah. And I think I think we they they never they never noticed that you were there, right? You you stopped sort of uh, at the edge of the square and then carry on. Um. And uh, yeah, and we hear them. Uh. You know, kind of like laughing in the in the distance as you you head off into the crowd. Uh. So the 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 sound switches from the the sound of crowd and the 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 noise of the the blacksmith kind of rises up through as you as we fade in on you and. Um, yeah, there's the the blacksmith shop. There's a group of uh, there's a group of dwarves standing around uh, outside, and they're arguing with um, uh, a, a man who uh, who is standing um, uh, standing talking to them, and they they seem to be arguing in, in dwarvish about something. Does anybody speak dwar- dwar- I, dwarves? I speak. I do speak okay. dwarvish. All right. They're haggling over the price of uh, of some materials, some some ore that the, the dwarves have brought up, and the ore the dwarves have their like long kind of ringlet curly hair. Um, kind of out in the open it's a hot day they're, they're not wearing their, their traditional like sort of pointed helmets they have them under their arm and they're just they're talking it's a friendly argument it's not like a, i hate you i'm gonna kill you but just like a i'll give you 500 and no more sir and they're kind of going back and forth in, in dorvish as you uh, as you approach um the man has um uh he's missing uh, one arm uh just below the elbow um and he's he's got a uh, uh, like a ledger sort of crooked up under uh, underneath and they're they're talking and he he looks up because he sees you you're you're an obvious sight kind of like sees you out of the corner of his eye and then goes back to talking to the dwarves, um, and uh, yeah and so you uh, you you approach, and uh, what do you want to do? Um, I guess wait for the like the the blacksmith is talking to these people. Yeah, he's he's wheeling and dealing with these dwarves. I guess uh, I wait for an op- wait for them to like finish their argument, or just but to kind of like be close enough and look at the blacksmith, like indicating that you know I need to speak with him, so he knows to wrap up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he he finishes his uh, his his conversation, and everybody seems to be like happy, and they they both do that thing where when they split. They're they're both like ha ha I got him <laughs> right like they they go their separate ways, and he he turns to you, um and uh, and he he laughs. He's got this face that's you know lined from from years of being out in the sun and from uh, easy laughter and he, he he laughs when he sees you and he's like my wife said there was an angel in town and i thought i was the only angel for her ten she it's an honor and he like bows uh and and with his his good hand which is not his right he he like reaches out to, to you berg to like give you the kind of like warrior like handshake and it's awkward at first because you're used to using the other hand. Mm-hmm. So he's kind of like puts his hand out. And he's got a good good grip in his left hand. And he like sh- shakes around and he's like, uh, he's like, uh, that's, uh, that's two in one day. I haven't seen any of your kind in a long time. And he, he looks down and he, like, the shackle is like touching his wrist. But he, if, if he has any like, what the fuck's going on here feelings, he doesn't show them. Yeah. Um, and yeah, he like shakes your arm, uh, and he turns. He turns back to you. He doesn't. He seems to just overlook you, um, uh, Black Gale. And he, he mm-hmm. turns back to to uh, Azrael, and he says, "I'm, <laughs> I'm afraid you're a little early. Uh, we won't have your equipment ready for some days yet, unless there was something else you needed." 
Yes. Unfortunately, this doesn't concern the armor directly. We have something worse to talk about. Do you have somewhere private we could speak, away from prying ears? He looks around and he says, it depends on the ears. Who is it you don't want to hear this conversation? And he, he reaches up and kind of like concernedly is like scratching his like stubbly chin. <clears throat> Those who control this area. Kind of like, yeah, looks at you and shakes his head. He's like, that's a bit more complicated. Are you a, uh, are you a praying man, Tianqi? I believe in the arcana and I pray to them in my own way. He says, uh, good, good, uh. It's been some time since I made an offering at the temple. Perhaps you would accompany me. Wow, you you want to show me the temple? I I have yet to see it. It would be fantastic. Perfect, Tianqi. Let's go. Bring your friends. And he he uh, he shouts into the into the blacksmith. He's like, "Dear, I'll be back." And uh, and she she shouts up from from the back. She's like, "Be quick. There's work to do." And uh, and he uh, yeah he takes you out. So he leads you through the streets, and he's just making, like, real small talk, right? He's like, oh, yes, and this is where my aunt lived before she died. And, like, just kind of, like, giving you some, like, fill-in stuff about the about the area. Like, obviously, like, somebody's listening, so I'm just going to fucking small talk at you. Don't say anything important. Uh, and then you reach a uh, – you reach a, a – a temple building. Um, it's fairly small, and it's one of those like multi-purpose uh, temples. And uh, he uh, he takes you you to it, and you um, you can see, and we see this as you go in. We get a, a wider shot. It's kind of a squat uh, building with multiple entrances, and then out the back, there's this this thick plume of uh, of white steam coming up out of the out of the back. Um, and he leads you through the through the temple to uh, a set of uh, bamboo uh, doors. And on the doors, on either side, there are lacquered um, paintings of um, kind of a similar style to the scroll. You saw that priest drop? Uh, there are just like two naked figures like entwined on this, on this door. Uh, and he turns and he looks at you and he says, um, uh, I know we're strangers, but this is the safest place to talk, so follow my lead, Tianqi, and... Uh, I hope you're not too modest. And he turns, and there's a there's a young um, a young boy there uh, holding a, a like an alms box. And he reaches in, and he takes out some silver pieces and places them in the box, and kind of rubs the kid's head. And he's like, "Good boy, don't tell anyone we're here." And he pushes open the door, and the smell of um, like heavily perfumed steam <clears throat> kind of like wafts out into the into the temple. And he he looks and gestures, and he's like, "After you, honored one." Thank you. I, I walk in. Okay. All right. And then uh, Berg and uh, and Black Ale, do you follow? Uh, mm -hmm. I want to make one one uh, perception check to make sure we're not being followed as we entered. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. <clears throat> yep. Uh, great. Eight. I have no idea. Okay. No. You. You're not. You're definitely not being followed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I shut the door and just go. He seems happy. <laughs> Berg's voice. <laughs> Berg, are you are you going into? Yeah. Okay. All right. So you come inside and you're in kind of a like it's very like steamy and perfumed in here. Everything is dark because you're like now inside, kind of part of the the cave wall, and the air is is very like moist and highly perfumed. So you can smell like rose oil and stuff in the air, and there are candles everywhere. And you're in kind of a uh, like a locker room area almost. There's some some benches, and basically as soon as you come in, a couple of very uh, a attractive attendants uh, come up to you, and they're wearing just like thin, um, regardless of their gender, they're wearing the same kind of thin, kind of red, um, mostly see-through like robes. And they come up and they like start taking your like undoing your clothes basically, and like taking them from you. Um, the uh, the the blacksmith's husband. Uh, just kind of like shrugs at you and like can gives you this like oh might as well enjoy like look as uh, as they like undress him. Um, what would I know that this what religion this is? Like <laughs> you can make a religion check. Yep. Yeah. Can I assist with that? Uh, I mean, you're not having a conversation about it, so no. You can make your own separate check, but thirteen. Okay. There. Yeah. I mean, Azrael, you you have no idea what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, Jubilant Black Gale, you know that the the marks on the door and the the general like attire and everything indicates that this is a, um, a part of a shrine or a temple to the lovers. 
Um, and part of their part of that that aspect of the arcana is um, like pleasures of of the of the flesh, right? The material world. It's not generally considered okay. like sinful to like have a good time, um, though. It could be like a bathhouse. It could be a brothel. It's hard to tell. Right. But what's happening right now is the like ritual unrobing and the anointing with oils before whatever comes next. You're supposed to know already if you've paid, but he didn't tell you. All right, uh, I make kissing noises at Azrael. <laughs> right, <laughs> like at some at some point at some point in your life, yeah, you like watch two people make out. I was, and yeah, I was, I was disgusted out. with it. Yeah, it was. I didn't understand <laughs> why there was no beaks or what was right. happening. Yeah. I look yeah, at gross, you and I'm like fleshy faces. <laughs> sorry, you're not my type. <laughs> <laughs> and I I just like roll my eyes back. And my hat starts to fall, so I prompt it back up a little bit. Mm-hmm. I point yeah. towards the boy. Start making kissing noises. And no, he's may- too young for you. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I just put my towels up. Look at the air. Yeah, I mean, no, no one in here is like children, but they're, they're, you know, uh, we, we, the, the culture fetishizes youth as much as we do. So they're, they're kind of virile youngsters that are attractive. Um, and yeah, like um, if you, if you, if you let them, they like, yeah, they, they undress you, and they're like kind of like hum chanting while they do this. There is like a religious sort of quality to it. Um, and they, they, they clearly like put your, uh, your, uh, armor, uh, somewhere safe. Like they lock it in a, in a chest. Are they, uh, are they tr- attempting to do this to Berg as well? I'm assuming. Cause he's yeah, there. Yeah. yeah. Berg's just like, Berg holds up his hand as they, as they do that and motions for them not, not to disrobe or, or yeah. disturb any of his. Yeah. There's a, there's a, a, a woman, um, and she, she kind of like has one hand like up to like under undress you, like start undoing the, the lacing in your shirt. And she says quietly, like in common, uh, she says, um, you cannot go into the sanctum dressed the way that you are, or dressed at all. Please, this place is safe. No one will harm you here. You have Berg no need for these things. And like Berg those- looks, I'm, I'm gonna, Berg's gonna do a little check to see if she's, what check would that be, I guess, insight. just what, insight, insight. yeah. Yeah. Right. My insight's great too because I'm so wise. Yeah, I'm with Berg on this. I'm not taking my armor off at the moment. Ten. Okay. Um, I don't. I'll let you interpret it how you want. <laughs> um, you see, like sadness for you, like like pity on her mm-hmm. face, like like she's looking at your scars and at the the bracer, and she's like. You know, you don't you don't have to suffer here. Like this isn't a place for all that horrible shit that's obviously happened to you. You can you can leave it behind. She feels bad for you. I think Berg uh, talks an eye over to uh, Azrael, just like like looking at him, like you know, like kind of like eyebrow raised, like, are we doing this? I look at you and say, we have to honor the gods to further our goals in life. I look at Azrael and say, is it worth your life? In your voice, we will be we will be safe here. This is a holy place. Um, I like grab no. my armor no. and adjust it, and I just like almost proudly, like I'm I'm kind of like banging my chest with my armor, and I just walk out the front door. Okay, yeah, you just turn around and go back outside. Yeah, I'm not fucking getting wet. I'm a goddamn bird. I don't want to do this shit. <laughs> <laughs> fucking, it takes forever okay. for my feathers to dry off. Berg, Berg, and uh, Ezra, what are you doing? Um, Berg uh, I... tucks, tucks a dagger up his anus. Um. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. You die over, <laughs> over the next five to ten minutes. It's a tiny dagger. It's like a shiv, you know? I'm uh-huh. uh, I guess, no, considering that Azrael is really like his only like companion that he has familiarity with now at this point. He's just like very reluctantly like, very well. Yeah, just I, I let them undress me and get me n- naked because I assume that, that we're going in here because it's a safe place for us to speak where yes, no one exactly. should be. Yeah, yeah, it's a pri- it's a place of privacy. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, you you get you get undressed and and led uh, after a brief uh, sort of uh, anointing with with oil and and incense. Uh, you're led into a. Uh, uh, an inner chamber and it's it's not that big but it's you know it's it's a sizable essentially a pool there's <laughs> a, a tiled space around the pool um the pool itself is there's like steam uh, coming from it it has a, a faint kind of pink color and there are um like uh, 
flower petals floating on the on the surface. You can see through the fog that there's maybe like another half dozen people here. Um, it's it's a pretty small space, and uh, and they they gesture for you to to go on ahead, and then the the attendants kind of leave, and the um, the uh, the 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 man, the the one armed uh, blacksmith's husband, uh, yeah, goes over to to the pool, to the edge of one of the pools, and and he like slips in uh, and and gestures for you to to join him. I follow him and slide down into the pool as well. Okay, just wait for Berg to come. It feels really nice. Like all this other stuff aside, you've been on the road for a long time. You don't have a lot of opportunity to like relax and hang out in a nice smelling hot tub, and here you are, and it feels great. Um, so you, you, the two of you, get in uh, and uh, and sit down, and he uh, he smiles at you and he shakes his head and uh, and he says, um, "I'm sorry about." All of that, it's hard to find a safe place to talk. And we should be all right in here. The guards take their job very seriously. Sometimes the gang, they come and go, but we'll be warned if it happens. I so, see. Uh, how, how long have these people been in charge of this town? He, he shakes his head. Not the whole town, just this neighborhood. And for some time... The thing is, it's not like uh, it's not like criminals in the capital. Not like that at all. These are well, they're a cult, a religion like any other. Their right to grasp and seize and take is the same as the right of this place to protect and anoint and to. He like looks over at like a back room and then blushes a little and doesn't want to say what he was thinking. Yeah. Well, you see, we have a problem. Apparently, your wife's. We we just bought the. I explained that last night. We bought the apartment from his wife's. Uh, was it what was it? Her niece or? Yeah, let's give let's give these people names so we can start referring to yeah. them by their job. Um, so her uh her name the blacksmith uh her name is June. June. Yeah, blacksmith June. Uh, he. Uh, he used to be in the army. Uh, this guy, that's why he's missing a missing a, a hand. Um, and uh, his name, uh, we'll call him Soldier Lee. They all have pretty common names. And then midwife, uh, midwife Min, is his uh, sister-in-law, and her sister. <clears throat> I think that's what he said that she was right. So yeah, okay. June Soldier Lee and uh, who? Yeah, blacksmith June Soldier Lee and midwife Min. Her name is okay. Min. Um, he yeah. You could also, if you wanted to, call him One Arm Lee. It's another. I like calling him One Arm Lee. One Arm Lee. <laughs> one arm, one arm Lee. Uh, so he uh, he says, uh, yeah. So you're like, uh, go, go ahead, pick up where you were for another. So names. like, yeah, we last night June sold us Min's apartment, and apparently she had to leave in a hurry. But unfortunately, men owed these people a lot of money. Now they're coming after us for it. Do you know anything about this situation? He sighs and, and nods and he says, yes, unfortunately, I do. My wife was only trying to look out for her sister, but Min has been in trouble as long as I've known her. Always needing a handout, always moving from town to town. She had us put her up for a while when she moved here, but I knew it wouldn't last. Even this far from the capital, trouble will follow you wherever you go when you carry it around inside. That girl. <laughs> Ironically, the people that she's in trouble with in a bigger town with proper priests, they would be the ones that could help her out of this situation. This kind of materialism, this addiction, you can't cure it without the gods' help. <sighs> they only know where she's gone now. These people came into our apartment this morning and threatened us with the debt, and then they they just, then they were going to go threaten June. Bird laughs and goes, "Threatened." <laughs> what? How do you do? What? Well, I guess my question is, how powerful are these people? Are they to be feared? He looks at the two of you. Uh, and he, he says, uh, uh, I'm not in a place to tell a man what he should or should not fear. But they are dangerous, and they are many. 
Their leader is a disgusting slime ball of a man. Came down from the capital several years ago and has been running gambling houses. He's a, a nasty, nasty man, but he has friends, friends all the way up. And he, he kind of like, you know, he, you know, he means like in the monastery. Yeah. But yeah, he, uh, he says. Uh, so he's a well connected man. And if you kill him, you'll make enemies of other people. He nods. Some say he's the personal procurer for the abbot. Not a smart man to make enemies with. This abbot, is he the leader here? He kind of sighs and it's like, it's complicated. Have you, I, I mean no offense, Tian Chi, but have you been here long? And Not, you know he doesn't mean he doesn't mean the town, he means like the realm of mortals. <laughs> I've been here for quite some time, but not amongst people. Your customs are kind of new to me. Of course. Well, unfortunately, uh, as it is in heaven, not so much here on earth. There is no order to things. Uh, the web of connections is not a chain from top to bottom, but a mess of tied string like a child's game. The abbot is at the center. He's the, uh, the one who connects to all things. So a very powerful man. Yes, yes, of course. Even this far out on the border, we've heard rumors. Something about the valley. A discovery? There have been more and more dignitaries. The abbot has visitors every day coming from the north. Hmm. You, how, how long has this abbot been in power? Long as we've been here. So... A dozen years? Maybe longer? Did this man ever... Is he now known as an evil man, would you say? Or at least a, he, a he, man he, that... He chuckles. To and he chuckles when you say that. And you keep getting this response from people. You're like, is he an evil man? And he kind of laughs and, uh, and he says, Oh, Tian Chi, that's not how it works around here. He's a rich man. That's more important than good or evil. And he looks kind of sad, like he has to say that to you. Like he's like, oh, yeah. Like he's realizing that it's true as he says it. Hmm. Well. Have you ever noticed a change in his behavior? Was he once a man of charity and now a man of greed? Or has he always been this way? Hunting for the Mara, are you, Tianqi? <laughs> no, no. Nothing like that. Of course, men with enemies, there are rumors, but I think it's just greed. A man wants power. Being an abbot is a good way to get it. Yes. Wealth and power does corrupt. So they say, Tianqi, so they say. Every man has his price. Well, so you're telling me that this, this person that your sister-in-law was money to is a man that even if we were to take care of him the problem would not go away and just get worse and worse this organization this town human life civilization it's a many-headed snake you cut one off more will grow if you pay them perhaps but then they'll know you're willing to pay so they they value strength and power above all else. They value money. And money. Mm -hmm. well, well, there is the problem of this debt. If you don't pay it, because if someone doesn't pay it, they're going to start. What happens to someone that doesn't pay debts to these people? Has it happened before? He looks at Berg uncomfortably for a moment. And then back to you, and he says, uh, what is the value of a life? People disappear, sold into servitude elsewhere. There are always mines and quarries to dig. I see. So the, bet the debt always gets paid in the end, one way or the other. I think they like it when people can't pay. A slave will serve you forever till you work them to death. 
And again, he looks at Berg like, I don't know if I'm like allowed to say that word around you. Like, please don't hurt me. Uh, you pay a debt once, 100, 200, 1,000 pieces of gold. Well, that's worth something. But a slave, a slave will serve you forever. Or at least as close as they get. Yeah, I think Berg just gets a little bit like his muscles just tense up a little bit. Not that he's like lost control or he's like in a, in a rage. It's more sure. just like a but flash I mean, you're, of. You're a, you're a berserker, right, man? Like that rage is always just under the surface. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the water so, gets hot. No. <laughs> exactly. So while you're while you're soaking in the tub, um, you've you've <laughs> left uh, the the little side uh, the side shrine, right? You've gone into the main temple building. Um, uh, Gail. So yeah, I'm just hanging a, hanging out, waiting for them. Yeah, to be it's done. a it's it's a a hall, like a decently sized hall, maybe a. I don't know, like a hundred feet across, and there are uh, coming out from the the center uh, building um, some other like shrines to to the different stations of the uh, of the Arcana. And um, are you just kind of like wandering around out there waiting for them, or yeah, go somewhere specific? I'm wandering around and definitely having a the thoughts of like <laughs> of of what Proto had. This is the longest I've been away from the Shire, you know. <laughs> So, <laughs> right, sure. Uh, so I think you you walk. You're kind of like walking around, looking at at all these these. There's like statuary of the of the kind of um, images of the of the Arcana up on the ceiling. There's a, a fresco of the Wheel of Fortune with a the various sort of stages sure, of the Arcana I, around it. I haven't seen anything like this, so I'm definitely in awe of it. Yeah, totally. Uh, and you you walk by uh, two two old men. And they're 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 having a they're having like a philosophical discussion. They've got a little like crowd of of like students sitting around. The students are all like actual children. They're you know between five and ten, um, as you would guess human age to be. And they're wearing um, like sort of like little versions of like scholar robes. And they have little tablets. That they're they're doing calligraphy on and taking notes as these two men uh, are are debating. And can you make a religion check for me? Sure. Uh, there it is. Eight. Okay. All right. So there's something vaguely familiar about this and about the way the men are dressed. And they're wearing they're wearing masks. They're wearing these like white porcelain masks. And one is a mask with big like big puffy cheeks and uh, a little like baby looking like curl of hair on their face and little like narrow eyes on this this porcelain mask. And the other one is wearing a mask that looks like a um, like an old man, it's all wrinkly and and like they're very like cartoonish looking these these masks. Right. And they're having this sort of like formal. Uh, they're having this like formal debate where one of them, uh, one of you, as you walk by, one of them says, um, uh, "Yes, sir." And this is the the baby. It's like, "Yes, elder sir." But in the year nine twelve, did not the philosopher Yang say? And they then and, and like it makes a point, and the kids all like laugh. Uh, at this kind of like joke that the the philosopher makes, and then the other one kind of like huffs and like folds his arms over his chest, and they're they're pantomiming this thing, and the kids seem to be enjoying it, and they're having this little like staged philosophical debate, um, and uh, yeah, and do do you stop to watch or do you do you just yeah, like I, pass by? I, I'll sit there and watch. I'm definitely uh, okay. I, everything is catching my gaze, so I'm spending more time, not knowing how long the conversation will take, uh, dwelling on on the minutia of of the entire area. Yeah, you're, you're, Head kind of like yeah. If, there, if there's like there's lots of stuff to look. If there's at. like a marble to or a pylon or something, I go up and like tap it with my talons to try to understand it because I've never seen anything like that before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so most of the kids are like engaged in this conversation and they're they're talking and you you pick up most of this. It's it's a very dry uh, kind of philosophical like conversation about. Um, they seem to be like like lawyers maybe or a lawyer and a judge arguing about the fate of a prisoner. Uh, the prisoner has done something bad, and they are citing historical examples of things like precedent that has happened in the history of the of the court of coins to try to free this man or or condemn him to to prison. Right. Um, make a make a history check for me. All right, you're doing all the things I'm not specialized in. Four. <laughs> Okay. So that's and that's like the great thing is like you feel real out of place. There's something that something that like right. calls to you. There's like a, a fervor here, uh, and you you get. I think an undertone of emotive response. Like you feel, you feel your your feathers kind of like uh, tingle a little bit in that you're like this. This seems familiar somehow, but you can't place it. And when you're fixated on that, um, that's when you hear uh, like a, a coughing sound. Someone near you is like, <coughs> and you, you turn. I assume. Yeah, I, I turn. I, I don't turn my body. I th- I turn my neck like a bird yeah. would. Just turn around. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, one of the one of the little like philosophy student kids um, 
they uh, they're, they're probably like six or seven. Um, they've wandered over to you, <laughs> and are uh, are standing there, just kind of like holding their their little um, clay like tablet, and just like looking at you, and. Uh, and they uh, they bow like politely, but in an awkward kind of off balance way because they're still a little kid. They do like a very respectful bow, and uh, and and they say, um, uh, "Excuse me." I look down at him and kind of cock my head, staring at him. He's got my attention. Most respectfully, stranger. But what are you? Uh, I'm just looking at him and. In uh, Berg's voice, very deep throated, I, I ask him why. Why are you here? <laughs> right, and and they kind of like start, <laughs> like the the sound is unusual coming from a, a bird, and uh, and they they say, um, I I have heard this lecture many times before. I grew bored. You seemed interesting. The uh, having not probably no interaction with a human child, I uh, af- after he states that I, I kind of get down on his level and hunch down on my uh, on my talons and and look at him and and say in the blacksmith's voice, uh, I thought I was the only angel in town. <laughs> yeah, and the, the the kid laughs and 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 says, "Fascinating, how very strange. Are you here alone? Are there others like you?" Uh very affirmatively, I shout, yes. And, <laughs> right, and, right. Uh, and like, Azrael's echo. voice. <laughs> yeah, and, I, and maybe the, the echoes scare me a bit, so I kind of like look up at the ceiling as the echo bounce around the you're room. Like, you're like Bumblebee from Transformers. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, so I say yes to the kid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the, the kid, yeah, just shakes their head. Um, uh, uh, I am uh, I am a student, um, l- studying to be a scholar, and they they put their little pudgy hand out to like shake yours. Yeah, I, I look down at the town and look back up as as a bird would be confused about a, an outreaching hand, and I'm I'm hesitant to like move forward with my talon, but I maybe I I take off my uh, the armor on my my hand and put a talon forth and shake his hand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so he kind does of he seem scared hand. or anything? No, no, he's okay. just, he seems very curious. I, like, I, definitely, I definitely mimic the laugh of a child that I just heard previously. Sure, yeah, and like it's probably not just one kid. It's the sound of all of the kids like you, that you picked up on. Right. Um, yeah, and so he, he, uh, he says, um, are you hungry? Um, I, here, and like reaches into his little like, bag, and he pulls out a, a paper-wrapped like, um, little like, bun, like a steam bun, and, and like holds it out to you. Uh, I poke it with the talon does it like protrude all the juices from the inside as i poke through the the bun portion yeah like if you poke at it with your, your beak or something yeah it, like kind of some of the sauce like drips out onto the floor yeah i i look at the sauce and study as it goes down to the ground and maybe scrape some up with my talon taste it in the beak does it seem mm-hmm. like yeah. i don't eat this stuff normally so does it seem appetizing? no it, it tastes it tastes really good um it's yeah there's this kind of like bland white thing but inside it's kind of like eating a bug right like the outside is just kind of like a grub but inside it's got like meat and juice and stuff so yeah he, he's maybe holding this weird like bug in his hand okay yeah i i grab it with two talons and put it in my beak one one chomp mm-hmm. okay yeah he's like eat it and he he um like wipes his hand on his robe and uh, and he says, um, absolutely fascinating. And he looks back over his shoulder at the uh, uh, the two scholars, and he says, "They're almost done. I should go back." I feel like the kid is is. Uh, I th- I think in like the kinku culture, when someone does a nice thing for you, you try to impart words of uh, wisdom to them. At least in the the group that I grew up in, studying mm-hmm. under the the guys of temperance or sorry of uh judgment and so i I look at him and maybe cock my head and and like take his hand and say uh um in hazan's voice i say anything born can die and i close my eyes and like bow to him and he he cocks an eyebrow and he, he says how strange do your people and he he kind of gets to a whisper he's like do they follow the tower uh, I shake my head no. 
Then where did you learn that phrase? I, I look at him and, and maybe I'm like flustered at this point because I just realized that maybe that's what Hassan does. So I'm ruminating on that. Uh, and I make the laugh of, a, a, of the children as I just kind of like bumble about the room and walk off. <laughs> sure. Yeah. And he, he shakes his head and, and yeah, just, he's just like, and like walks back to the, to the group. Um, yeah. So you, you leave, uh, you leave him, uh, him to that. Yeah. And I just cool, continue cool. studying the, the area because I've never been a place like this before. <laughs> I like that to a small child. Anything bone can die. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know that that's a small human or that that's like, <laughs> yeah, no, right. for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. It might be, a, I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> awesome okay cool uh so uh meanwhile back in the uh in the baths um was there anything else that you wanted to know um uh, you wanted to talk to uh soldier lee about yeah like uh do do these people honor a debt when it's paid or do they always want more and more and more <sighs> These these people, anyone who follows the devil, the connections of the material are all that matters. Uh, debt cannot be paid so much as exchange for the opportunity for more debt. This is how they got my sister-in-law. She would gamble, make money. They would sell her things, and she would need more money. And so she would gamble again. It's a cycle for them. If you pay them off, they'll only know you're capable of entering that cycle. It will not turn their attention away from you, but toward you. You'll have them following you like hounds for scraps. I see. Mm. It's going to be a very difficult thing to deal with then. Is no. there anyone in town that opposes them? A resistance even? Not down here. They don't have much direct reach up above. I would not begrudge you, Tian Chi, to sell the apartment and move somewhere else. Then they wouldn't bother you. Just us poor folk. Or not so poor, as the case may be. Those who work hard. They don't have a reach all the way to heaven. Hmm. Something tells me that even if I moved, there would be someone else in the other place that would want something. He nods and uh, and kind of smiles like ruefully, and he says, "There's always someone who wants to put their hand in your pocket." Mm. Well, thank you for your time. You've been very helpful. I hope this didn't put you at risk. He uh, he laughs and he says, "Ah, now I can t now I can tell my children I had a bath with a half orc and an angel. <laughs> they won't believe me, but at least I get to relax here." And he like stretches his arms and like leans back. And he's like. If you go, don't mind me staying. <sighs> One last request. If we were to satisfy this debt for you, would you be willing to forgive some of the money we owe you for the armor? He laughs and he says, not my decision, I'm afraid. You have to take it up with my wife, and I already know her answer. Hmm. Okay, then. <laughs> Thank you for your time. <clears throat> Yeah. Okay. So the two of you, uh, the two of you leave, and uh, I think that's the that's the last thing we see before the the break is right. We see you starting to get up. We get that like tease on Berg because like Berg turns around, starts yeah. to stand up out of the water, and it fades to black. Glistening. Yeah. That we get that like hip bone, and then it's out. <laughs> and then and then out of nowhere behind a pillar is just that same girl from the gang, like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, awesome. uh, all right. Let's take our uh, third break. Going in the final hour after this, we're running a little bit late, so it might be a shorter final hour, but we, we might go a little bit over. Uh, regardless, though, don't get anywhere. We'll be right back with more Court of Swords right after this. We'll see you then. <laughs> 